Hey folks, I'm Aslan Law from AZ Entertainment and here we are after a month's break in Sydney once again for fun, fabulous food down under. Ignore my half empty bookcase. Some of you may know or most of you may know I'm packing. So we are going to go say hello to our panelists um, before we head on down to Sydney. Let's start off with an old friend and say hello to Michelle Rival. <laughs> Hello, Lynn. How are you folks? Happy to be with you again. Um, great panel this evening because we have a, a fantastic butcher. And uh, AG, I'm really happy to be with you in Osland again because, you know, my, you still have a piece of my heart over there because I grew up over there for almost 10 years. So, uh, well, that's all. Happy to be there with you. It's, it's good, to, good to have you on the show again. Let's go say hello to Joy in Sandy, no, San Francisco, San Diego. Oh, my goodness. How did I forget? Hi, Joy. Hi. Um, I'm in the greater San Francisco area, so I'm on the same peninsula. We call the area the South Bay or Silicon Valley. bit more uh, famous of a name. Hello, everyone. I'm very pleased to be here and watching uh, Anna Jane cook that absolutely fabulous-looking Wagyu. Uh, I am Joy Stewart of the Joyous Kitchen. The uh, blog web address is below, and uh, I've gotten into Tapas Month this this month. Very excited for that event that Lisa is hosting. Excellent. Good to have you. Good to have you again. Let's go Good say Let's go say hello to a hangout virgin. Say hi to Lee. Lee Spencer. Tell us what you do, Lee. Hi there. Yes. Hi, folks. Uh, my name is Lee Spence. I'm a master butcher in the UK, and I'm really excited this evening. I'm, I've been looking forward to, to being on the panel and uh, watching AJ do her, her cool, cool stuff. Um, I've been in uh, contact with AJ for the best part of six to eight months, and we've had some fantastic conversations about different products, um, different kinds of meats. Um, and, and basically, I'm really, really looking forward to this evening with this, this fantastic, beautiful piece of, piece of beef that AJ is going to cook this evening. SRV. Thank you, Lee. Let's head on over to Sydney, where it's about 5 o'clock and freezing. Is it still snowing? It's not actually snowing in Sydney, but it's snowing on the outskirts. But I don't think it is now. It seems to have warmed up a little bit. Okay. Which is good, but it's still pretty cold. I've got five layers on. <laughs> Ooh, that's cold. So I'm positively Michelin. I've got one, two, three, four. Yeah, five. <laughs> five layers. Okay, before, before we start talking underwear and all that stuff, let's t tell, us, tell us what you're cooking today. Okay, I'm going to do two things, and I'm going to do them simultaneously because one is a broth. And it's a really easy cook because my whole thing in life is I don't want you ordering takeaway. I want you to be able to put something fabulous on the table really, really quickly. Now, in the recipe I've put up, I've said use asparagus. I've said you can use um, uh, beautiful um, sort of uh, fresh herbs and... I've, I've, I've done things that are in your season and not in mine, therefore I couldn't get asparagus, blah, blah, blah. Now, I'm also going to use a liquid stock, and the reason I'm using that is because it's just as easy to use and it's, you're going to get, it, this is actually pretty close to a homemade stock, it's not as good. But I'm going to do a broth, and we're going to, we've got some really exciting ingredients. I'll tell you what we've got. God, have I lost it? No. Oh, there we are. This is a truffle, and this is dug out of the ground just last Friday. Wow. And the smell is quite divine. So I'll talk to you about the different ingredients. We'll start with the truffle, actually, because it's a very clever little thing. If you, I'll just put the stock on, if you put this truffle in a glass jar with a couple of eggs, then the next morning, you will have eggs that are truffle flavoured and you haven't used yep. your truffle really. Mm. Truffles have to be eaten within about 12 to 14 days of you picking them out of the ground and you've got to keep them moist because they lose they lose their smell as they dry out. 
Mm -hmm. So you keep it in a moist towel in a plastic bag and that'll keep it a bit longer, but it's got to be 12 to 14 days maximum. Now the other thing you can do with truffles, a lot of you probably would have heard of something called truffle oil. Mm. Well, don't believe that there's a thing of truffle in it because it's a chemical. It's an, it's an aromatic oil and there is no truffle in it. If you want to make truffle oil, I'd encourage you to do so. But you need to maybe put a bit of truffle in and not too much oil and you need to leave it there for two days maximum and then you must use it because it will send the oil rancid. Okay? Mm. Um, and they come in. This is a very earthy... It's a very earthy one. Sometimes they're sweeter. It depends on where they are and where the trees are. But this is a lovely one, and it was dug up by a lovely, a lovely truffle dog called Maggie, who I put a picture of up there. Okay? So I'm going to be doing also a beef carpaccio. Now, excellent. the beef is so exciting. It's Wagyu beef, which um, Candy knows all about. Um, it's a Japanese beef, and it is very different to the beef that we all eat. Instead of it being a darker colour, it's meant to be a red. Mm. It's very highly marbled, and this is terribly thinly sliced um, because they kindly gave it to me that way. Can you see in there, can you see the marbling all the way through? Of the Absolutely. Fat? Mm. It's not just around the outside. It's right through. And this is a, a monosaturated fat, and what's interesting about that is when it hits heat, the fat dissolves back into the meat. So it's got the most incredibly creamy texture. It's really, really interesting meat. And I'm very excited to have it, and I'm very lucky. This has come from a group called the Osawa Group, and I meant to say this truffle is from Hartley's Truffles. And, you know... We grow a lot of truffle in Australia now, and we actually, during our winter, we export to France. Uh -huh. Because it's your summer. Uh -huh. Interesting. And, and you, were telling us in, you were telling us in the green room that um, Australia grows a lot of Wagyu beef. Yes. Now, this is interesting because it's a Japanese thing, but this has come from um, a guy who is a master of Wagyu beef called Kimio... Um, Osawa. Okay. And he he is a master of Wagyu beef. And this is where this has come from. And so it's very, very good Wagyu beef. And the difference with Wagyu is that where I think we've been educated to buy pasture-raised beef mm. where we can, and we do a lot of that in Australia, and it's got a completely different flavour. The reason that Wagyu is so expensive is it is actually... Um, after about 10 months, they then go into the fattening phase and then they're in, um, in, a, in a barn or in a, that sort of environment where they are fattened up with grain and they don't do any exercise mm. and they're massaged mm. and they, it's about, the true Japanese way is about 600 days of that. <coughs> and because of that, it's intensive and it's expensive. Mm. And that's why Wagyu. This this particular Wagyu is about $150 a kilo. Okay. So I was very lucky to be given half a kilo of it. Wow. And, 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 and okay. we're, going to be, we're going to be making carpaccio with that. <laughs> so what we'll do, I think, is I've just put the stock in, to use a litre of stock. I've put the recipe up already. Did you notice, Asma? Yes. Yes, we did. <laughs> okay, so I've put the stock in here, and I've just used a vegetable stock because with this particular meat, you you want to be able to taste the flavour. I think mm. it's really important. The um, but you can equally, chances are you're not going to have wagyu beef. But if you get a piece of eye fillet and you put it in the freezer till it's almost um, almost frozen. Mm. You will find it very easy then to cut it very finely, mm. okay, mm. which is what you require for both of these dishes. Yeah. Um, we're also going to do carpaccio of beef. Mm. All right, so um, we'll start with this. This is heating up. 
there's a thing that I have here that I think, as the new will be familiar with, others will not. Do you know what that is, Aslan? I can't see from here. It is black dried fungi. Okay. And what I love about it is it's so cute. It's like that. And what you do is you put it into some boiling water and it turns into this amazing mushroom that's black. Yeah. It has a great texture for a broth mm. because it doesn't break down. But again, you can get these at Asian stores. Chinese but, mushrooms, in other words, what we call them. What do you call them? Chinese mushrooms. Oh, when they're dehydrated yeah. like this. Very technical. Yeah, that's not what they call it here. But anyway, I mean, it's obviously a Chinese mushroom. So, um, yeah, so I just need to... Gee, have I forgotten something? <laughs> yep. Um, while, while, while you go and find what it is that you're looking for, we'll go say, we'll very quickly say hello to folks in the audience. Hi, Candy, uh, Candy, Richard Clarkson, Bruno, Kim Bultman, Michael Thomas, Carmen, it's very hot in Spain, apparently. And, um, and, 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 Maurice Thompson, I think, I, I, I think I saw his name somewhere. Right, Joy, tell us, have you, have you had what you beat before? I uh, I have had it before. Well, okay. I have had the American version of Wagyu beef. There should be a disclaimer around this because it's not always the same breed of cattle. Considering how expensive the beef is and how far it's coming from, they often crossbreed it with Angus beef. Okay. Now, yeah. it has the same marbling. It's gorgeous, you know. Um, it's very tasty. I've had it in what they call shabu shabu, which is the Japanese version of a hot pot. And I feel like yeah. I'd like to try it other ways as well. It seems to be a bit of a waste. It seems to be a bit of a waste for me. Shabu shabu. <laughs> well, I, I agree. Yeah. Mm. That's so the Mongolian, the Mongolian hot pot, the Japanese version of it. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's called um, um. shabu shabu in uh, in in Japanese. Um, <laughs> it's like a fondue. Yeah. It's so, called sukiyaki in Japanese. What? Okay. Lee, do you, um, you were saying in the green room you've not um, had it before. Anything similar that we have to argue beef? Well, the, the only I can I can think of is, is like Joy said, is the, the, the Scotch oven in Angus beef mm. uh, in this country is, is very marbled. Um, uh, but also the breed that we're using in the country I, I, I'm working at the moment is the Devonshire Ruby Red, which does cover a good marbling, um, okay. um, especially in the sirloin uh, and, uh, and in, in the fillet, which is which is you know quite quite rare because the fillet is, it tends to be very 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 lean, very soft, very tender, mm. and quite a lean muscle. Um, but also the the Limousin breed. Which is quite a large, uh, large breed. Um, can uh, you can get a good muscle in that, but generally it tends to be quite, quite lean. So to, to close to the, the Wagyu beef is really is is, is the Aberdeen Angus. Beef. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. So Thank, thanks for that. Right. Tell us, done. tell us what you've been doing. You've got the broth, yeah. vegetable broth on. I've got so, the broth on. I have put in the onion. I put mm -hmm. in the Finely chopped ginger. Okay. I put in um, some um, celery. Yeah. And I put in some um, garlic chili. Any garlic? And, yes, garlic. Thank you. Okay. Look at my mushrooms. Look what's happening to them. Mm, that's mm -hmm. fast. Mm. I love this. Chinese. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's um it's it's actually sold in dried here in the UK and they're essentially, funnily enough, called black fungus mushroom. Yeah. That's what the label is. That's what the label says. Yeah, and that's what I've got here. Mm. So anyway, so I'm also going to put these in because once you get everything in, it doesn't take very long to cook at all, mm. and it's just a, then a matter of um letting it. I just need it to simmer for a little minute. I'm also going to, because we're going with Wagyu, where I might put something, I'm going to put some udon noodles in. 
Okay. And um, that will just make it nice and a very interesting breakfast, no doubt. Sounds good. The um, as a, if you if one can't get those Chinese black Chinese mushrooms, shiitake would do nicely, I reckon, because shiitake any, is quite neat. As I said, as I said in the recipe, any any fresh Asian mushroom is fine. Because I I use those as well. This is just a basic thing that you can put whatever you like in, really. I think. Mm. And what, I'm what, what? Some water chestnuts. Okay, that's water chestnuts, all right. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding that those uh, black mushrooms have kind of a unique mouthfeel, aren't they? Sort of like uh, uh, rehydrated seaweed? Yeah. Yeah, they're delicious. That's right, that's right, they are. Michelle, have you, yeah, have, have, you had, have you had wagyu beef before or anything no. similar? Not at all. Uh, I ha I regret one thing. I told you just in the green room. I was in Japan and I did not taste it. Um, I had Japanese pork. That's fantastic. But uh, no, I did not taste that at all. Okay. Next time. Yeah. But about mushrooms, I would like like to say something for for those who go and pick mushrooms as I do. And uh, what I discovered, well, I really love one of them is uh, Trumpet of Death. I don't know if you know, the, the, they look like these ones. Uh, yeah, I see you AG, you, you know what I mean. And you know what, yeah. your, your tuber melanosporum, your truffle is fantastic, but you can only be sure to get good ones uh, in some, only in some places, not everywhere, you know. There's so, uh, such a big traffic around truffles. That we, we just pick them twice, yeah, three times in a year, and we dry them, and we bring them back in a in a bowl of milk, uh, warm yeah. milk, or, uh, yeah, and it's fantastic with okay. uh, meat. It's and it's you just have to keep the the juice. Okay. That's great. Interesting. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for that, Michelle. Right. So you're you're slicing the truffles now. The truffle now. Yeah. And I don't have, needless to say, I don't have a truffle slicer, but I've, I've done it fairly finely, yeah. so which is what you need to do. Mm. And I thought what I would do is, while this is simmering along, with the with the carpaccio beef, um, when, when you do truffles, by the way, if it's an entree dish, you probably need about three grams mm. per person. If it's a main, they say about six. AJ, while, while you're there, do you see this bottle, right? Is, is that a wine bottle? This bottle right here, can you move that? Yes, I've been on it already, yes. That's it, just move it out of the way so we can see that board completely. That's it. I'll talk to you about that too. Okay, you cool. The wrong Excellent. <laughs> so, with, with the carpaccio, it's a really, really simple dish. What you want to do is you want to lay your beef out and it must be really thin. Mm. Now, if it's not thin enough, don't be panicking about that. Cut it as thinly as you can. And if you get something like I fillet, which is a really delicate meat and you cut it thinly, just put it between two pieces of greaseproof paper and gently rolling pin it mm. and it will just spread. Mm. And you will get it down to being like paper thin which is what you kind of, not paper thin, but you want it quite thin. Um, and with, um, and, and to be honest, that is what I would normally do carpaccio with. But given that I've been given this. Oh, that I, looks so good. Already. I, I think I'll have this for lunch. Mm. I'll have the broth for breakfast. <laughs> Now I am taking with with this wagyu. I am taking some of the bigger veins of fat off because I am not cooking it. Okay. Mm. Mm. But I'll throw those into the soup because you wouldn't waste them. They've got the most gorgeous flavour. Okay. Now all you need to do with this, and this is the kind of thing with your weather now, you'd be crazy not to really, you know. To be crazy not to really do this, and I'm sure Lisa 
Lisa Watson does this a lot, I bet. Actually, um, we've, not, we've not had particularly hot weather this last week or so, has we, Lee? Oh, really? No. It's been oh. quite cool. <laughs> That's a bit disappointing, isn't it? Well, it is. I am in the UK. It's not been hot, has it, Lee, this last week? No, it hasn't, no. No. <laughs> I quite forgot what British summers truly are like. <laughs> So, so I'm going to season that very well. Again, I say it every time, please use really good salt mm. and really good pepper. So true. I've only been to the UK in the in August, um, and it's been consistently sunny every day I've been there, and really warm, like in excess of 80 degrees. I'm not sure what that is. Wow. Um, Converted. If, if guys remember how I said put some cinnamon and stuff in, yep. in the recipe, I've just mixed it all together there because I've got a particular mix that okay. I made as a conjurer, and so I'm just using that. Okay. Um, I'm also going to put just a little bit of lemon on mm -hmm. this because lemon, as you would know, does cook meat a little mm -hmm. bit. You don't want it to be too cooked, but you want it to be a little bit cooked. Um, then what I'm going to do, because it's going to be really, really easy, is I'm just going to make a little salad. Okay. So that we, 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 have a, we, we have a question um, from Kim, Kim Boltman. I don't know if that's a question for later. I'll bring it up anyway, Jane. You can decide when to get to it. Speaking of wine, what goes best with Wagyu? Well, funnily enough, when I had it, I went to a, a, and again, Candy would know about this, I went to a thing called Tanabata, which is a particular celebration in, in Japan on the 7th of, of July, and you make a wish and you tie it on a tree. It was all very lovely. But we had sake, and we had Desai sake, which is, I think, pretty well top of the range. And we had a number of different sakis, and it just married so beautifully. Okay. Was, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll pose this question to Lee as, as the butcher. What do you think? What wine? The wine? Mm. I'm not a very big connoisseur on wine. Um, my, my actual favourite on wine is a, is a Merlot um, red, because um, obviously it goes, it goes well with lots of different kinds of um, red meats. Okay. Um, and with poultry, so I go for the California white. Okay, so I, I suppose for for Wagyu, if if you are going for a good, strong, robust red, perhaps Michelle, 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 Michelle is the wine guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was asking myself, oh my! Sorry, Michelle, you tell what us. What do you think, Michelle? Was that a good answer? <laughs> yes, 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 Lee, yes, Lee, but, but, but uh, in my choice. Yeah. Penfold 1991 pure Syrah. Fantastic, I do, I do. I think on one of my shows I did a, 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 a distinction of the, uh, the differences between the various soy sauces. Tamari is usually wheat free and it lies, if you're thinking of taste, it lies between the light soy sauce, which is salty, and the dark soy sauce. Tamari is yeah. definitely sweet. So, did you ever try a little bit of truffle? Anna Jane, did you try to grate your, um, your truffles? Yeah, I wanted slices of it today, but I I will. I don't know what I'll do with the rest of it because yep. I don't eat a lot of it. Mm. I find it, That's I like it. it, but it's quite earthy. It's very strong, yeah. yeah. And, and the way that chefs whack it onto things, I don't know why they have so much of it because I think it's one of those things where you don't need that much of it. No, when I make foie gras, hot foie gras, you know, uh, in a pan or uh, cooked other ways, what we do, we grate just a little bit, you know, just on the top, and exactly. it gives, it must give the flavor, not too much and uh, enough uh, for that. 
Now, as I said to you, asparagus aren't in season, so I haven't gone with asparagus. I've gone with like a, a Chinese broccoli, or broccoli style thing, just a Chinese mm. green. Any greens work. This is the thing. And I think, I think it's really important for people to realise that you know, don't get head up if, if you can't get something for a recipe because you can always improvise with something else. It's really important mm. because otherwise you give yourself a nervous breakdown about cooking and you don't cook and you get takeaway. <laughs> you don't be doing that. So that too is pretty well ready to go. <laughs> Just needs one more minute and I'll serve that up. Now I'm going to dress this little salad. And the salad is just some lovely, I think in America you call it arugula? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we call it rocket. Yeah, Joy? We call it rocket. Rocket. Yeah. Uh, rocket. And so I've just put some finely sliced red onion and some rocket and some parsley. Um, and I'm just going to put, this is a beautiful olive oil I got the other day. Uh -huh. um, can you see that? It's a really lovely Italian one. Okay. I went to a new client and he had such, that was the video that I put up Lee, and he had such amazing produce that I think I probably spent my first order that he has ordered from me in his shop. So I think he's kind of done well there. Again, a little bit of salt, and um, I'm just going to do it with lemon because I think that's what's what's going to work best with this. I'll just I'll just bring up a comment here from Donald Brandt. He says, "I would like to taste the beef without anything on it, cooked and raw." I think in, when we were in the green room, AJ was munching on the beef raw. And um, tell us again, AJ, what what what's the fat like? Well. It's really interesting and it's like, it's, I, I can understand why he wants to try it and I would encourage you to try it because it is like no other beef that I've tried. And if you had a, like a thick steak of it, you really couldn't have too much of it because if you did, you'd find that you really, um, yeah, you, it'd be too much. It's, it's mm. very creamy. Mm. Mm. And, but the fat goes back into it, so you don't have like, when, when you cut into it and you're eating it, it, it it's sort of, hasn't disappeared, it's still there, but it's just such a creamy texture, I can't explain it, it's, it's quite different to anything else. But, it's really good, it's really, you know, it's a really nice thing, and if you can get your hands on some, I would highly recommend it, frankly. Okay, so, so you've, you've topped it with some rocket leaves and... Yep, all I've done is some rocket leaves, a little bit of, uh, little bit of red onion, because I, I like that, and, um, and just lemon juice, but it's got to be a really good olive oil again, and, um, you know, just grate a little bit of uh, pecorino or parmesan over the top. Yeah, mm -hmm. perfect. And you've got yourself a fairly fabulous little snack there. If I might um, interject for just a second, sure. rocket in America is called arugula. In case you guys are looking for it. Yes, that's yeah. right. You were, you were trying to confirm that. Yes. Thanks, Joy. So that—that's my little carpaccio. Excellent. Take a photo of that. Joy, have you got have you got the camera going? Camera's not liking me these days. It's not working for me either, uh, honestly. Okay. But I've been trying. Yeah, so we can't do photos at the moment, AJ. You'll have to do one and post it. Well, that's okay. I can do one myself. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so that's one dish. Michelle, you want to try one? See if it works now. Doesn't want to. No. Yeah. So hang out. Hang out. Yeah, I just take it posted. It's no problem. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll do that a little bit later. Okay, so that's one dish which I'm pretty happy with and I'm actually really looking forward to eating that for lunch. Fantastic. Okay. Dish number two. <laughs> dish number two will be the broth. And what I like about it is it's just so healthy. You've got mm. all these beautiful Asian greens. 
You've got a lovely flavour with it. There's enough here for a family of 16. <laughs> um, now, the other thing that I put on the top of it, which, again, you just... Just make sure you get a bit of everything so that you get the flavour right through. Mm. The other thing that I put on the top of it, which is, I know it's a bit decadent, but it really does, again, it's like truffle. You don't use too much of it, and that's saffron. Mm. And I find that it just imparts just a little bit more luxury to it. And um, I'm, I'm lucky that I have quite a bit of saffron in the house because I used to have students from the Middle East and they'd say, what would you like? And I'd say, well, I'd really like some saffron. And they'd say, great. <laughs> and then they'd arrive with like 30, 30 grams of saffron and stuff. So I've got a little stockpile. Excellent. That looks so um, for me, I just think, you know, oh. a very, very plain soup like this is, I, and I, I personally, and I just put a bit of uh, celery leaf on the top and a bit of parsley. You could put coriander, you could put whatever you've got in the garden at any given time. But um, for me, it's healthy, it's delicious, it's really, really, you know, quite yummy. And with this saffron too, see, I, I think a lot of people don't have, and I'm very blessed that I've been given this, but um, it's just... It's got the most gorgeous, gorgeous smell. Oh, and if it's all red, you can be sure that you're not getting the right saffron because yeah. it's probably a fake saffron. Well, yeah. And just a little bit on the top, like a nice little pinch, and then you'll find that that actually goes through into the flavour of the broth. But rather than put it in the broth itself, put it on the top, and then you get a delicious little, you know, Bit of saffron. The other thing I was going to say to you, with with the saffron, um, don't don't stress if you haven't got it because it's not the end of the world. And for God's sake, don't buy something that's imitation saffron because it tastes horrible. I didn't know there was imitation saffron. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> yes, there is. And that there, I'll take a photo of it. Is a nice little easy dinner. Excellent. Mm. That looks good. That looks good. So there we go. Amazing. Fabulous. Joy, do you two dishes? Oh my god! Did you not tell me to put the beef in the soup? Oh, for goodness' sake! I didn't realize. I did. I didn't realize you were supposed to put the beef in the soup. Now, what you do... What, she wants to keep it for her, herself. Yeah, I think so. Oh, God. You're right. See, this, is You're what right. this is what happens when you go to bed and you do not sleep. And, and this, is, this is what we get on a live show. Voilà, ça this is fantastic. Isn't this great that Absolutely. I can do this? Absolutely. But then it doesn't mean... Amazing. It How much time like... did you? How much time did you? In, in boiled water? How much time? One it minute? It will take about a minute because a minute. you don't want it overcooked. Mm. And you really, it's like any hot pot when you put thin meat in. You don't need it. Like, you know, if you do a pho, you, you know, it goes in and it comes to the table basically. Yeah. Joy, yeah. you know, that's quite interesting because you talked about the shabu shabu and she's putting that in her in her soup now. It, it does because seem like a that. very quick shabu shabu, but lots of flavor. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah, um, Chef Raita Noda, who was the one who I went to look at, cool. mm. he actually did sukiyaki, which is what I should have done. But the thing is, now I just want to show you this. See how the marbling sort of has disappeared? Mm. Mm. But when you taste it, It's really good. Oh, I have, a chance to have. have you all had? Have you had dinner, Lee? <laughs> no, not yet. No, me neither. My mouth is watering. <laughs> no, not fair. <laughs> so now what I will do is serve this up, and we'll Even just that's take that half past five, right?
even at half past. This seems like um, the powdered um, pepper, hot pepper, uh, Japanese condiment would be really lovely on top, or the white pepper I, that they I, use. Jimmy, I talk about long pepper, mm. which as a you'd be familiar with, mm. and it's a really, it's like a cross between black pepper and and chili almost. It's quite aromatic. It's a really interesting pepper. But I again, think, just use I, I think Joy and Joy's onto something. She's talking about chili togarashi, um, which is the pepper pepper mix, um, Japanese pepper mix, spicy pepper mix. Yeah, I think yes. Instead of the saffron, that would do very well on there. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so this meat is just it, it's rare as it should be. <sighs> <laughs> I think I've outdone myself there. I think I think I have to go out and find some good beef tomorrow. Yeah, me too. I was thinking about that, Linnea. I was certainly uh, uh, Angus, Angus so. definitely Angus, yeah. <laughs> well, look, this recipe really works very well with just I fill it. But okay, then we have our wagyu beef. Oh no 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 no! no. And it's well, really it's seriously good. Fantastic. So quickly and so easily done as well. Fantastic. And wow. how embarrassing to forget to put the meat in. But hey, it's 5 o'clock in the morning or 5.30. Yes, yes, this is true, you see. If, if we've so done it, we've got no excuse. <laughs> it's 5 o'clock for you. No, that's true. You have no excuse. But I, it's, I think, again, Aslan, and we say it all the time, if you work with really good produce, there's not a lot you have to do to it to get a great meal. And mm. that's the key. Mm. You know, and Michelle would agree with that. Lee, you would as well. Yeah. Really, really easy. I'm just going to taste the broth. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us, tell us what you taste. Yeah, it's got all those layers of flavour. Mm. It's got layers of flavour. And, and that's what you look for because you want something... And it's so simple. Really okay, we believe simple. you. Please drop that spoon. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let that spoon alone. <laughs> Leave that spoon alone. <laughs> so, yes, so does anybody have any questions about it? We actually... You, we must, you, you must excuse my naiveness. Is uh, When you say about the quality of salts uh, yes. uh, and, and the peppers, I mean... As far as my understanding is, uh, there's sea salt and then there's table salt. Um, um, my wife introduced me on, on the Polish salt, which is very, very strong, a lot stronger than the UK salt. So what other grade salt is there? I mean, is, is what well, else have you used this evening? Sure. Yeah, I personally, we've got, we've got river salts, we've got... Um, um, uh, um, rock salt. salts that are unprocessed right. come straight out of the near the Barrier Reef. We've got a whole range of salts. There's a company called Olsen Salt, um, and they do an absolutely beautiful sea salt flake. Mm. But they also do um, cattle licks for properties. Because out here, I don't. Do you have those over there, Lee? Where when it's really hot, the cat the cattle lick the salt, yeah. and it helps them retain the. That's the right, yeah. Salt. Yeah, so they do salt licks for cattle. They also do the most amazing range of salts, and right. they gave me um, they gave me this. Actually, it's funny that you ask because I I found this interesting. Okay, so they have um, macrobiotic salts. And isn't this just the cutest thing? It's like a whole little test tube mm. thing of all their different yeah. salts. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And this one, these are raw. Um, mm. They're just, and, and they're the macrobiotic ones. Then you've got ones that are blossom salts, which are different again, but they look like little little snowflakes almost. So yeah, yeah so salt, there's, get online. Salt isn't just salt. 
I think, I think, I, I think, yeah, you've got a few different types there. Um, but perhaps, Lee, in, in answer to your question, I think uh, when we say use a good salt, really what we're talking about, don't use table salt. No, no, because well, I say to my customers when I when you season a, a steak, you know, when it's room temperature before you put it on the griddle, I always say don't use uh, table salt, use sea salt because it's milder. Mm. Uh, yeah. Not black pepper, yeah. Mm. In fact, uh, it's it's really salt should bring the flavour out. It shouldn't yeah. overpower the flavour. That's the whole idea of salt. Yeah. Salt, in fact, you know. in, in fact, mm -hmm. as far as we're concerned, Joy, we, we, table salt should should shouldn't even exist. Anti-caking okay. stuff shouldn't even exist. Should it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, so I think absolutely. Like I think our kids. We, we must teach our kids to learn to cook with natural salt. I mean that when you cook Japanese, you use uh, soja, you know. Uh, what I mean, it's salted it itself by itself, you know. So we don't really use a lot of salt because you have a lot of bad salt, uh, Lee, in fact. Okay? Uh, the, the thing is that we use um, sea salt from uh, the north of, uh, just between you and me, from Britain, from, yeah. Brit from Brittany. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, the, the 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 good deal is to uh, mix ingredients together as you get natural salt from that. So uh, I know it's difficult for a lot of people because you know in the habits they they used to eat salted, and we don't do that. We uh, neither with sugar. We we try to to get the best taste from the ingredients uh, themselves. Voilà. Yeah. Absolutely. I understand. And but with meat, kind of things are just meant to yeah. Enhance. But with meat, I agree that the, the big deal, the big challenge, is to find the great cell on the on, on a good piece of meat. That's mm. yeah, that's true. And pepper too. Like and pepper too. Like pepper yeah. comes from India. Mm. Okay. And I think I think the thing with when when it comes to pepper, it's more a case of freshly ground as opposed to already ground. I think perhaps that's the first step for many people wanting to cook. Mm. A coarse ground. I mm. get, I do my pepper in a coarse ground, mm. like a sort of a slightly yeah. yeah. ground. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I I have I have something like twelve peppers uh, at least, and what I do. Um, what I do is before doing something, I try to mix together Jamaican Jamaican pepper is so strong, it has a so strong flavor that you can't use it alone. So you have to mix it with a second or a third one. So you just have to, you know, you have to do like like you like you feel it. But uh, I also have peppers that you you cut with your knife, just what the way you've done it before with your uh, uh, with your mushroom uh, uh, ag. And I, what I do, I slice it very, very, but very fine, you know, very uh, thin. Sorry. And uh, this is well, this on, on a piece of meat. Interesting. Let's Thank let's you. go let's go see what Kim Boltman says. She says we used to dare each other to lick the salt blocks our dad set up for our herd every summer. Oh. <laughs> she yeah. says her current <laughs> favorites are Himalayan pink and French grey. Yeah, great. Well, well, there yeah. you go. Yeah. So, can I, can I tell you, I'm getting an absolute waft of that truffle on that meat. Excellent. So are we, so are we in our heads. <laughs> mm. and, and I think as you were asking me about the cost of truffle. Yes, I, I was. I was. Three or four dollars a gram. Okay. Yeah, they're costly. They're, they're very costly. Needless to say, are they? Do you, do you use truffles at all in your daily cooking, or perhaps in your in your um, classes? You do uh, butchery classes and stuff like that, don't you? Yes, I do butchery classes. Um, um, in the next couple of months, I, I'm going to be start doing some cooking classes as well on the on the the, the, the cuts I'm I, I'm I'm teaching. Excellent. Um, but the the one thing I, I've never used is truffles because when when anyone says to me truffles. I think instantly very expensive. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah, okay. I can imagine, and it, it can put some some people off. Joy, do you use truffles? Um, you know, I love 
to order things with black truffles in restaurants, but I've never gotten my hands on any, so I'll be really excited the day they show up in my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, do you hear that? <laughs> it, the, um, we, we do truffle bubbles here, too. Yeah. Okay. And they're pretty gorgeous. Okay. We had a steak the other night, and we I'm had... Afraid. I'm afraid you have steak yeah. and just a big blob of truffle butter. Oh. Yeah, truffle. Is that, that mm, definitely, definitely. Right, we we are on the 45 minute mark actually. So 15 minutes past um, our oh, really? presentation time. So, but it's been good, hasn't it? It's been a really good show. You got two for the price of one or one and a half, whatever. Uh, well, you so. We are, we're going to let AJ take us out, but before we do that, let's go say thank you and goodbye to our panelists. We'll start with Michelle. I don't know if you've noticed, but it's getting darker and darker. Yeah, Did you, yeah we, we've got the clouds from the UK coming right to us. Yeah, yeah we're blowing them over at the moment. <laughs> thank you. So, um, okay, uh, for people... Uh, who don't know, I'm Michel from Cuisine et Cigar, a very popular food blog here in Europe and France. And uh, it was great to see you again all. And um, yeah, I'm in the Northeast with uh, a cloudy sky from the UK. So uh, see you soon, folks. Uh, Thank you, Michel. Thank you. Sorry, I was just, I was just trying to leave. Um, Lisa, least details Kim Boltman. Right, Joy, over to you. Thank you so much for having me. It was extraordinary to watch you cook that delicious looking beef and now I'm very hungry. Uh, goodbye from the Silicon Valley. Have you got anything anything coming up going on holiday or? Um, I'm planning to start making a video series starting with that uh, Peruvian dish, ají de gallina. Excellent. Looking forward to that. And over to Lee. Lee, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much. I've really enjoyed this evening, um, and I'm looking forward to uh, many more shows. Um, uh, from, from myself, and lovely to meet the other panelists, um, and especially AJ cooking that fantastic meal this evening. Mm. Uh, thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you so much. And over to AJ to say goodbye. Thank you all for showing up, and um, sorry about getting to put the meat in the soup, which was kind of the whole um, idea of the show, but never mind, we got there. Um, I've enjoyed cooking. It's, it's been a lovely show for me because people have given me lovely things to cook with. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. And um, depending on Aslan's movements, that will be, actually. If she's still around, we might do it on the 15th of August. But if she's not, we won't. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. Hopefully we'll see you soon, and good luck to you packing up. Thank you, AJ. Just, just, a, just a note, yeah. I um, If I'm around, we'll, uh, I'll be doing the show. Otherwise, I'll get um, Yasmina to host the show for you. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, we can get her uh, doing No problem at all. All righty, say goodbye, AJ. Bye-bye, AJ. Thanks so much for joining us. Bye-bye.